Joined now directly from Westfield, any any of the Colts training camp, Matt Taylor. How are you, Matt? I'm good, guys. What's going on? Yep, it's day two of camp, so it's here, and uh, we got football. Life is good. We're we're going, and we're not slowing down. Yep, Bob Kravitz was uh, on with us yesterday, and we were talking about the opening day of camp. He was headed out there, and then I uh, knew that today you're out there, so we I saw the reports. Uh, the fans are out and about. It looks fun, uh, festive. Uh, it, it's just everything that uh, people have missed. No, it's great to be back out here at Westfield because last year, you know, obviously because of COVID, every team had to do their training uh, training camp at their team facility, and it's just – it's almost like it just happened in a vacuum. You know, if you weren't there, you wouldn't know what's going on. And there's not a lot of, uh, there's just, there's a different vibe to it. And so to have fans back up here, just a sprawling campus of, of you know, great facilities at Grand Park, you know, Colt City's back. That's sort of like the interactive, you know, fan zone for kids to run around on the fields and to catch passes and, you know, time themselves in the 40 yard dash, interact with the mascot. There's bands up here. Colts in Motion is up here. So there's tons of do for everybody outside of just, you know, the hardcore fan to sit and watch practice for, for an hour and a half or two hours. Uh, but I mean, it just feels like football again. That's the best part. You know, there's just a different vibe and a different energy with people up here and fans in the stands kind of ooh and a nah when there's a great play made during practice. Yeah, and, and it's very unusual because uh, back in the day, it wasn't very long ago, this was not uh, allowed. I mean, th this is a full turn from what it used to be, sports. Now you're opening things up to people who can come in and, and see the inner workings uh, of this. It, it's just a, an opportunity that did not used to be here. No, I mean, the Colts are one of five teams. The Colts have, for a long time, been one of the teams that has prioritized sort of being out and getting away from the team facility in years past. I mean, they've gone to Anderson, they've gone to Rose Holman uh, and, and Terre Haute. Now they're here at Grand Park. And so, you know, they're not in dorms or in a college setting, but they're still away and guys can still just focus on football for, you know, three or four weeks prior to the start of the season, kind of get away from life's troubles, um, you know, all the different stresses that these guys have, just focus on the playbook, focus on their bodies, getting right mentally and physically before the start of the season and build a brotherhood and build camaraderie. And it just doesn't happen that way anymore. And not that you can't do some of that, you know, if you're another team working out at your team facility, but the Colts are one of five, only five teams in the NFL that prioritizes allowing fans to be at practice and really giving people an experience that can see the team, can feel the team, if for whatever reason they can't go to a game at Lucas Oil Stadium, Matt, it's obviously, three. oh Matt, obviously you you're it's just day two, but I, I'm curious from from your job perspective when you go out to Westfield, what what are you looking at in particular? What what are some things that you're jotting down? What are things you're looking for uh, as the season approaches? Well, for me, I mean the big one. I mean for 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 the most part during the summer. And I've been studying the roster, so I've got the names, I've got the numbers, I've got where you went to school, things like that. But for some of the new guys, and there's about 30 new players on this roster, it's seeing how they move, seeing how they're used, kind of identifying their, their, their body types, so to speak, to help me with, with my job. But just, you know, the big storylines of this team, just finding out real early, you know, who's going to emerge as a pass rusher. We talked about that a lot this offseason. Who's going to be that third cornerback how is Jacob Easton looking at backup quarterback so some of the big storylines we talked about ad nauseum for two two and a half months kind of played out yesterday for the first time and then you got the backdrop obviously of COVID-19 with Frank Reich testing positive even though he's asymptomatic so he's not out here this first week so you're kind of adjusting as far as that goes. And then you're also, you have three other players that are on the COVID-19 list. And, you know, they're, they're not guys just to kind of like gloss over and sneeze at. I mean, Al-Kadim Muhammad, who is uh, in the mix to be one of those defensive ends and kind of take on a bigger role, he was on that list. So is TJ Carey and Xavier Rhodes. So you got a starter and then another guy that plays a lot in, nickel packages that's not out there on defense so get those guys back uh you know as soon as possible to kind of get in the fold and get right and get ready to go for the start of the preseason and, and, and uh start of the regular season 
Yeah, because getting a quarterback in tune with the offense is uh, probably the hardest thing to do, and having a new quarterback uh, with this offense is something that they have to do. Although new to the team, not new to Frank Reich, but still uh, they've got – to get this going yesterday. A little bit of a, a slow start, it looked like, uh, for him. But uh, I think a lot of excitement going on uh, in hearing him talk. Uh, so uh, there's no way you put any stock into a first day. No, I mean, he said he was a little uneven. He was, uh, in his words, he was a little amped up. And so you can obviously understand that because this is a new, everything's new for him. New scene for training camp, uh, new teammates, new playbook, and you know, the, the head coach or the, you know, one of his biggest advocates and bringing him over in the trade wasn't out here. So yeah, he's just, he's kind of just human nature, just fired up and just excited to kind of you know, write the first chapter of his, of his second chapter, if you will, of, of his NFL career with the Colts, get off to a good start. So I'll be eager to see what he looks like today. I anticipate he'll be a little bit more, you know, steady and in control. Uh, but it's not like he was just awful yesterday either. I mean, it's just, First day, uh, day one jitters, kind of like that first day of school that we can all kind of relate to. So he'll calm down. He'll be in a good. He'll be in a good spot. But let's get guys involved, sort of just like it was last year, where you know at least seven different guys caught a pass in every game. I think this offense for the Colts this year is going to be just as inclusive with a lot of guys making plays every single game, and then the star of the game, if you will, is going to be a different guy each and every Sunday. Last year, obviously, we had some we had fans. Depending on where you were, there were limited capacity, or or some some stadiums did not allow any fans a season ago. But we you talked about a little bit more of a sense of normalcy here, um, you know, with fall training camp and everything. Are the players feeding off the energy of the fans, and and, and maybe even a little vice versa right now? Uh, oh, just getting back to that normal. No, that's a great point, and and absolutely. I mean, we've talked to a lot of guys so far this week, and. That's one of the things we, we make a point to ask is like, what what does this do for you? What what kind of energy does this give you? He's like we're, we're we practice already at a really high level already, and it's it's very very intense. But just out here with the fans, it just gives us more excitement. It just adds more juice to what we're what we're doing and how we're trying to get better. So absolutely, the fans just add an element to to practice and to training camp. I mean. This is this is why you do these things. I mean, the, the players play for the fans. They are entertainment for the masses. And so it's really all about the fans. Give them an experience. Give them something to see prior to the season and give them a reason to hope. Give them a reason to cheer and to buy in so that every Sunday, you know, folks around here can make it an appointment viewing to watch the Colts. Coming up next uh, for you out there, I know the fans are out there, and it's free. You have to get a ticket. Uh, you can just go to what Colts got, Colts.com uh, slash tickets. It, yeah, Colts.com slash camp. Uh, so you're exactly right. It is free, but you have to have a ticket to get in. It's all uh, digitally, if you will. So most people just you know download the app on their phone, show the phone, get scanned, walk right in. It's as easy as that. Well, Matt, I can't thank you. I know you got to get back to camp. It's busy, but I look forward to hopefully uh, doing the – maybe we can do the show from up there next Thursday. That would be kind of cool. Yep, let me know. Let me know. That, uh, come one, come all. I mean, it's uh, – the Grand Park is absolutely beautiful. It's on the north side of Indianapolis. Well, I should say it's it's a suburb of Indianapolis, but it's a breeze to get in here with, you know, Keystone Avenue and 31 being redone in the last couple of years. So, I mean, it is easy in, easy out. You can park. There's plenty of ample parking. There's food up here. So, you know, bring the kids before school starts. Again, have an experience. Uh, enjoy the Colts football. And um, obviously, you know, watch the weather, too. Bring the sunscreen and, and stay hydrated. But it is a whole lot of fun up here. There's something for everybody to do. How long is uh, camp open to the public? Uh, there's 19 practices. So today is day two. So two out of 19. And I believe the last practice is August 25th. And most of the practices, Monday through Friday, uh, typically start around 9.45, 10, run into about 11.30, 11.45 ish. Um, the weekend dates are a little bit different. Most of those on Saturdays and Sundays um, are going to be in the afternoon, ranging from around 1 to 2.30. And then the big draw camp is going to be those joint practices with the Carolina Panthers before that first preseason game. Those dates are August 12th and 13th. And I believe those are. 
that's a Thursday. No, it's a Wednesday and Thursday get together. And I believe those start around two o'clock in the afternoon, but check the website. Uh, I don't have it up in front of me, but check the website colts.com slash camp for all the uh, info and the full schedule. Absolutely. Matt Taylor joining us uh, live from Westfield from the Indianapolis Colts training camp. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Look forward to uh, seeing you soon. All right, guys. Thanks.